Thank you all, and thanks for a full house. I feel so special. Um, <laughs> why do we love hackathons? Anybody? Make it cool stuff. What else? Energy. Sorry? The energy. the energy, which is caused by people, right? People make energy. People make things happen. People make the cool stuff, which is why it's even more important that we're talking about putting people first and how to roadmap a people first hackathon. So who here has organized a hackathon before? Nearly everyone. Who's in the middle of organizing one right now? All right, woo! Who's a student organizer? Probably more hands. And professionals in the room? Got a few of those too, welcome, welcome. Now who is responsible for the inclusion efforts on your team? Look around. All right, so we're here and we're here for the right reasons, right? Uh, hi, I'm Alex D'Arenzetta, Alexandra D'Arenzetta. Please call me Alex, it's a lot easier. Uh, preferred pronouns, she, her, and hers, identify as female. Uh, now I uh, have a bit of experience in civil rights and anti-discrimination. I worked as an investigator managing about 300 cases of discrimination, mediated sexual harassment complaints, in the workplace, and I led training and outreach for the state of Massachusetts Commission Against Discrimination. Later on, I went to work at a university where I led diversity inclusion efforts, education, Title IX investigations, which if you're in the university, you may have heard about those policies on your campus, uh, and worked toward advancing DNI for everyone in the campus community, including student organizations. So, what I'm really interested to talk to you about today is how to transform your mission your diversity mission, your diversity statement, and make that practicable, make that usable, right? Putting people first. So some takeaways for today, just at a high level, we're gonna understand why diversity is important. Diversity is a great buzzword, right? We hear it a lot. Diversity, diversity, diversity is important. Yeah, but we're gonna understand why and the numbers behind it. We're also gonna actually practice crafting your own diversity statement. There's some handouts, and I've also got a link to, uh, to, a, to a site for you as well. We're also gonna talk about some tips for creating an inclusion roadmap. So really, how do you get started? How do you get started with planning an inclusive event? How to put you on the map? How to put your hackathon first? And then lastly, navigating resources on your campus. A campus community can have so many different resources, but without knowing where to tap into them and how to do that, make those inroads, make those intros, it can be really challenging. I get it. <laughs> so I'm here to help, and if you have any questions, Maybe even something more personal that you want to share. I'm happy to talk about it offline afterward. But just some ground rules, we're going to keep it respectful because I want to keep it productive and I want to keep this moving forward to think about people first. Does that make sense? We all in agreement? Okay. So we know hackathons are for everyone, right? Yeah? Yeah, hackathons are for people. People drive innovation. Therefore, hackathons are for everyone. Actually, it's really interesting because it's one of the only spaces where people actually come together to collectively build something and create something and unify themselves to produce a new idea and a new solution, right? And they do that together, many different diverse perspectives. So in some ways, hackathons and participants at hackathons, volunteers, mentors, sponsors, those events are actually the prime example of inclusion, if inclusion means innovation, right? So let's start thinking about this a different way, a way that's really practicable. Why does diversity matter? Well, the numbers say so. There have been studies, it is proven. So companies that have the top, that lead in gender diversity, they're shown to be 15% more productive. That means more earnings. Those with greater racial and ethnic diversity are 35% more productive. Okay, and that's companies across the board. Right? And that's out of a study in 2015. And we see the numbers, they're constantly being tried and tested, and they're constantly showing that diverse teams, diverse perspectives, gender diversity, racial and ethnic diversity, they matter. So, let's think about this in a more fun way, right? 
Diversity is getting invited to the party. Inclusion is getting asked to dance. This is from Verne Myers, who's a diversity expert. Let's think about that. Diversity is getting invited. It's wonderful to get that invitation. You feel like you belong, but when you're there, you have to be engaged. And how does one get engaged? They feel like they're, they're in an inviting space, right? That's what we're talking about. So we're gonna play on these two ideas of getting invited versus engagement. Engagement meaning innovation, right? And building as far as hackathons go. A note too on hackathons. I actually won my first hackathon earlier this year at MIT. It was a diversity hackathon, the Impact Award, uh, which was really awesome. Um, and I've been to hackathons myself, huge enthusiast, um, and working actually uh, with the MIT Media Lab hackathon this fall for uh, augmented reality and virtual reality on inclusion efforts. So, first step, commitment to diversity. You gotta plan, publish, and practice, the three Ps. You have to let people know that you think this is important, and it is important, and especially on your campuses, when you're thinking about who can be an ally on your campus, you can be an advocate for hackathons in general, uh, what administration support you may want to seek, what faculty support you may want. Having an understanding and a commitment to diversity it's going to really be important. That's something that's been on the top, top shelf uh, for many universities, um, especially recently. Uh, and it's something that's increasingly important, especially in the tech space. So we're gonna talk about actually how to do that. One of the ways is creating a diversity statement. It's not unlike a mission statement. Does anyone have a mission statement for their hackathon? They basically, they know what the theme is and they know what it's gonna be about and they know who they want there. Right? You've done all that work already. So let's think about it a different way. You need to plan for it. Now, if you want to pull up, go to Bitly. If you want to pull this up right now, um, we've got a few handouts that may be going around. Now, this here, this is really uh, ideas to action, how to get started with some tips, some questions to ask your team to get you started in these various, area, various areas of access, um, gender forward thinking uh, at the hackathon. Can everyone see it? It's bit.ly slash MLH Alex, all lowercase. We're gonna be working from that today. Step one, crafting a diversity statement. You have to reimagine your vocabulary. You have to change how you're thinking about things, but only a little bit, because you're almost there. So first, on that form, on that sheet, if everyone pulled it up, let's take, take just about 30 seconds, look to the person to your right, I think everyone's got someone, it's a full house. Look to the person to your right. Say hello if you don't know them. All right, say hello. Hello, how are you? Okay. Everyone has their person? <laughs> everyone's got their person. Now we're gonna think of three words that come to mind when you hear the word hackathon. And you're gonna write them down. Everyone's got a pen and paper? Or you wanna take out your iPad? When you hear the word hackathon, three words. Five, four, three, two, one. Does everyone have their three words? When you hear hackathon, this is what you think of? All right, take 10 seconds and think of two words that come to mind when you hear inclusion. Two words that evoke inclusion for you. Just take 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Do we have them? Let's hear some of them. Does anyone want to want to share one word that comes to mind when they hear hackathon? Soylent. Soylent. That was one of mine too. Actually, earlier I was talking about. Yeah, swag too, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sleeplessness. <laughs> Maybe drive. I'm gonna reframe that. Community. Do we all agree? Community? Could that also be a word that, that would be evoked by inclusion? Right? What about inclusion? Does anyone want to share? Safe? Absolutely. Accessibility, right on. Togetherness. 
respect. And those are all things that should happen anyway, right? That should happen at a hackathon. That's how you create great ideas in a safe space, in a respectful space, in one where everyone can try them, test them, iterate, right? Try to make them work. So if you think about things that way, you have your buzzwords. You're starting with your vocabulary, that's the base for your diversity statement. Your diversity statement doesn't have to be more than a sentence if it's a strong one. So let's hold on to those. Hold on to those words that you came up with with your partner. Step two, you're gonna ask why and answer how. Now on that sheet, on that worksheet, couple questions. Why are we organizing a hackathon? Why is the theme important? What impact is it gonna have? Why will people attend? And how are the participants gonna achieve their goals? How are they gonna build? Right, so take just about one minute, one to two minutes, with your same partner, and work through some of those questions. Why are we organizing a hackathon? Right, this kind of goes to a mission statement too. Why is the theme important? What's the impact here? Just talk it out, just come up even with one phrase. All right, let's wind up these thoughts, because we're going to get to step three. And then you're going to see a sample that everyone can use, reuse, trash, take part of, whatever you want. What do we have? Why are we organizing a hackathon? Did anyone get to answer that? To empower hackers. That's an awesome one. That's a strong one. So people can make things, and they can make better, right? Now, now sometimes there's a theme. Why is the theme important? How you build community, how you spread ideas too. Inspire ideas, absolutely. Yeah, it may be someone's first time navigating in the augmented, augmented reality space. That would be a challenge for them, right? And building community through other people that know more. How are participants going to achieve this goal? How are they going to build successfully? Did anyone get to answer that? Soyland? <laughs> Working, Working together. That makes progress, right? And a little friction makes progress too. That's where diverse perspectives come in. Makes friction to move things forward. That's great, so I think you have a really great, really great understanding and you have a great framework for what's gonna come next. Step three is actually creating, creating and testing. So the, be the biggest thing to remember when creating a diversity statement, and here's a sample, is that it has to be a collective effort among your organizers. So everyone's got to buy in. Everyone should weigh in, because everyone's got to believe it. You have to believe it because you have to make others believe it. And you have to show others that you care, and this is a priority for your hackathon. Right? This is going to be a great tool to use also when you're approaching sponsors, when you're recruiting volunteers, right? when you're talking to vendors, when you're talking to other members of the campus community or school community. Right? talking to administration or faculty and saying, here's what we believe, here's how we're framing how we're approaching this hackathon. Here's our plan. Now, another key piece to remember here too is that many of your universities or schools probably already have a really well-vetted diversity statement or commitment to inclusion, right? There's probably pages dedicated to that, right? Um, so reference those. You wanna make sure it's aligned with also what makes sense for your campus community. A great tip here is to reach out, perhaps, to one of your offices of diversity or inclusion or equity and inclusion. Um, those are the experts working in that area and seeing if they can guide and even help shape if, you get, if there's some stumbling blocks along the way. Right? Now, after you plan for it, you've got to publish it. This is when you share it. This is when you spread it to your vendors, um, your volunteers. You create this statement. You know it's a priority. Um, and you can actually even assign the drafting to different working groups as well. That way it's, it's made as a collective and it comes together as one. Right? Now, of course, having a diversity statement is only part of the process. It shows everyone that it's on your mind, it's a priority, and it's something that you're thinking about. It lets people know where they see themselves. It lets people know that they belong. 
Step two, or really step three, is practicing it. Practicing inclusion. How do you do that? Well, one way is through inclusive space planning. Now that you've invited people to the party through that diversity statement, now you're going to ask them to dance. This is where you engage them. When you start thinking about access and also ability in terms of inclusive space planning. Now, on your handout, if you go to that link as well, you'll have some questions, some starter questions for your teams in terms of thinking styles, access, accessibility, language access, food, swag, gender forward thinking, marketing, and also culture and economic considerations as well. Just some questions that your team can ask one another when you're starting to plan around, around your event. So the first thing you can do, and you don't have to do this now, but just think about baseline. What do people need? Fundamentally, what do people need? It's like a needs assessment. People need what? Food? People need food, so let's talk about that. People need food. Well, what kind of environment would allow for people to enjoy what they need from food, right? We're th I'm thinking in terms of perhaps some religious beliefs, right, that have certain food requirements. So accounting for that. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about practicing inclusion and inclusive space planning. So asking what do people need, what kind of environment is going to allow them to enjoy what they need, either through self-expression or actually really because they, they need it, it's a requirement for them. What kind of environment will be inviting and allow them to participate? And what kind of environment invites free thinking, which we know is paramount. There are different kinds of thinkers. Some are quiet thinkers. Some are more collaborative and more social thinkers. So thinking about space as well um, to accommodate various thinkers, that can be really important, right? Quiet spaces, um, spaces that are comfortable, um, solo spaces uh, with the right tools in them as well, right? Post-its, whiteboards, things like that. And the more collaborative spaces for those that really feed off that energy and that's how they create their best ideas. So just an example. Now, just a quick activity. This is a uh, diversity wheel. These are the dimensions of diversity. Now, I won't purport to say that these are all the dimensions that are out there, but this is an example of one that you can find, and if you like this one, you can take it and use it and share it. Okay. It's from UNC. I'm gonna ask you just now, turn to your partner to your left, because before it was to your right, right? So you've got a new friend. Say hello. Now just to explain this a little bit, you'll see there's a couple different colors going on. You've got the dark blue colors in the core, and then you have a rainbow, right? Cornucopia of colors, really around the outside. Now just, just, um, just so we can better understand this, typically those that are 2D, two-dimensional, 2D diversity, that's what it's coined as, um, are those that, that are usually perceived. Um, age, gender, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, identity, sometimes, and ability. Right? So these are the 2Ds. And then on the outside, there are many other layers, many other dimensions. For example, functional specialty. Basically, subject matter knowledge. Subject matter expertise. Some folks are subject matter experts in areas that others aren't, and it takes two to build. So thinking about this, just select one group among these dimensions of diversity, even let's say functional specialty. Now let's think about who is part of that group and what their needs are. Let's imagine your, your hackathon is healthcare focused. It would be really important to you to have folks involved that are medical professionals or practitioners, right? They have that subject matter expertise and they're going to know what's the what, right? To have them either coaching or as mentors or as the end user if you're designing for them. Now think about what their needs might be. Well, if they're doctors, they might be on call. They might be frequently interrupted. Right? So think about how you can plan better for that. And then lastly, discussing how you can consider and work to meet those needs. Again, it's, it's a needs assessment and then going through what is practicable? What can we do here? Who do we want at the table? Who do we want collaborating? Whose opinion do we want heard? So let's just take, just take one minute, 
even 30 seconds, pick one of the groups, one of the, the groups along the dimensions of diversity, and just, just flesh this out just a little bit. Who's part of that group and what their needs are? Just like the example with the doctors, the medical practitioners, and the healthcare hackathon. And then think about maybe a solution or a way to work around it. Just take about one minute. All right. Does anyone want to share a particular group that maybe they, they, they talked about with their partner? A creative solution? Creative concept? Sure. Socioeconomic status. So what are their needs? Yeah, absolutely, and that's a great example. So thinking about who is part of that group, there are a lot of different people. When you think globally about socioeconomic status, right, you have persons who may not be able to afford the travel to even participate right, in a hackathon. So one of the things you might wanna consider is having separate funding, and this is something also that would be useful when speaking to a sponsor, right, um, in ways that you're wanting to commit and make your event more inclusive and more diverse, um, and how that could look, and if that's even possible. Right, so that folks can have the opportunity to have access to participate. You might be missing out on some great ideas. So that's a great example, having a small slush fund for that. Anyone else? Yeah. Parental status. Parental status. Child care reimbursement. Absolutely. That's an option too. Um, yeah, and also thinking about that as well, and this also crosses into gender forward, right, gender forward thinking, um, inviting those, let's say, accounting for new parents, new mothers, right, who might have the need to nurse, right, during the hackathon. It's a long time. In many universities, you should know, um, there may be, more than likely, um, is a designated room for nursing, right, a mother's room. It's a, it's a clean, comfortable space. Um, you should check it out and see if that's available. Um, it might be on your campus, and that would be a great thing to at least advertise about and, and um, seek administrative kind of thoughts around that um, and as far as including that in part of your hackathon. Right? So just some things to think about when you're planning for people and understanding, too, that diversity is not just 2D diversity, the diversity that you, that you see, maybe when looking in a room. Uh, it can be a lot of different things. Right? Diversity of thought, work background, education, where you went to school, right? what degrees you have, what degrees you don't have, right? um, geographic location, right? are you city bound or city, or are you outside the city, right? suburban? Right? That all ties to things like access to resources. So in thinking about this in a much larger way, think about diversity in a much larger way, that'll actually let you include more people. So just to keep that in mind. Lastly, know when your campus, right? Every campus is unique. No two are alike. So it's, and I know that there's some challenges around making those introductions and also making inroads, like there's challenges with anything else. Okay. Just some resources to think about, some offices that more than likely exist on your campus uh, and how they can be helpful. So for example, just to pick out a few, Disability Services Office, if there are some needs or some questions around space planning in terms of accessibility, right, either physical accessibility or, or um, in physical space planning, but also for other kinds of needs. For example, ASL interpreters. Right? Um, also seeking out, perhaps if there's a multicultural center, multicultural office, if there's other language needs for language access if someone has a preferred language other than English, so that they're able to participate fully, right? Um, thinking about who might be the LGBTQIA liaison on the campus, chances are there may be an office or at least one or more persons that are designated that's, that, that are experts in this um, and that can be, be resources to guide you as to how to make these, these spaces more inclusive. Because we're talking about inviting people to dance. So these are some offices that can perhaps support you in that. Also, registered student organizations, right? Great for mass mailings as well, Get the, getting the word out. And there's usually one or more people that are in charge of those and getting those together. Um, usually there's an administrative uh, office as well. Also, your business schools and entrepreneurship programs. If there's a business school that's associated with your university, 
chances are there may be access to sponsors there. Or they may have really great tips on how to talk to sponsors. Because the university may already have agreements with certain folks and certain companies. So look there too, right? Even though it might be a little bit outside the scope of what would be a typical participant in the hackathon or what has normally has happened, um, this can be a wealth of opportunity too to get those students involved as well from the entrepreneurship side and the business side. Lastly, faculty. Some of them may be diversity advocates or leadership and designated by the campus. So look on your offices, um, uh, your campuses um, and universities website for the Office of Diversity, Office of Inclusion. There's probably more resources there and chances are there's one or more members of senior leadership uh, that, that are advocates in this area, right, that are champions. So in remembering that the diversity statement is only part of the, part of the puzzle, that's helping you invite people to the table, letting them know that they belong at your hackathon. The other piece of it is inviting them and asking them to dance. Right? And that's making this space inviting and also publishing it. Right? Saying, here's what we have to offer at our hackathon. That can be attractive to the various groups of people that we see along the many dimensions of diversity. Right? So in thinking about that and what, we, what you heard today as far as just some core takeaways at a very high level, that we know that innovation is inclusion. Different people working together, they're more productive, right? They innovate better. The numbers say so. Plus, it's also great for society. Also commit to diversity, and we do that through a diversity statement. Diversity statement 101. Like I said, you can borrow mine. Plan, publish, and practice it. All of those three things are critical to making that successful. Knowing your campus, knowing your campus resources, knowing where to go, knowing what's out there, and knowing that it exists. If you have specific questions on these and building relationships with these different authorities and different offices on campus, please let me know. We can talk offline. I'll be here afterward. Measuring outcomes, that's another piece that we can talk about that all day long. But chances are your university may have Qualtrics, uh, SurveyMonkey, Google Form. It's really important to measure also, if you can. Right? to find out what people really liked about the hackathon. If you're gonna try something new and say this is how we're, we're now going to be inclusive at our hackathon, ask some questions about it. Have that regroup meeting afterward with the volunteers and sponsors. Ask the sponsors what they thought about it. Ask the vendors what they thought about it. Getting data is the best tool for you for next time to make it better. Accessibility, this is where you're going to consider barrier removal strategies, right, to make the space more inviting. And lastly, planning for people, because that's why we're here, right? Everyone here is to enjoy themselves this weekend, to learn a little nuggets to take away with them, to make their hackathon stronger, to make them build better, to make them make better, right? So when you're planning for people, identify who, you're, who you want there, identify who you want to participate, right? Inventory your options, brainstorm them, strategize, plan, implement, iterate, monitor, Lastly, evaluate. Okay. Take a phased approach. Yeah. I'm happy to stay for extra questions, but I want to thank you for your time today. I know we're running out of time. Um, but I want to thank you for, for, uh, for being here, and also MLH has been fantastic. Is everyone, everyone looking forward to the, next, uh, the rest of the weekend and the next few hours? Yeah? <laughs> I know there's still some great events to come up, so thank you so much for having me, and uh, best of luck to everyone. <laughs>